What should you pick as your first class and later job in Final Fantasy XIV? Now, there are many ways to evaluate what you like in a job in an MMO, but in this video we will take the perspective of looking at all the starter jobs and how difficult they are to play for the first 50 levels, as this is signified as a major point in the story where it is not uncommon to pick up a new job. We will look at each job in the order of my personal opinion of the difficulty of each job and highlight the key features of the job that may make it difficult to play. This video will not explain to you how to play each individual job, however, I have videos covering the first 50 levels on every single one of these jobs, contained in a playlist linked in the description. Be sure to let me know in the comments which job you feel most inspired to try, I do so love to hear about it, genuinely. Now then, let's begin with Lancer and Dragoon, ranked as very easy. As you level up, you will early on unlock Life Surge and will need to learn which action to spend this with. Not to mention that this is rather early to learn an ability, which works slightly different from weapon skills and spells. After this, Disembowel presents itself as an alternative combo sequence that gives a damage bonus. And Lance Charge also presents itself as a temporary damage bonus that you will need to use alongside other longer cooldown attacks at your disposal. Jumps. And finally, at level 50, Chaos Thrust finishes this disembowel combo and adds a damage over time component to your rotation that you also need to manage. This also comes with a positional requirement, however, that is part of the course for melee jobs, but that is that. Next, Arcanist and Summoner, also ranked as very easy. Take note that leveling up Arcanist will also simultaneously unlock the healing job Scholar, which I will get back to later. The main difficulties of the Arcanist is entirely in understanding the job gauge. Otherwise, the gameplay loop is extremely simple. Either charge, attack with a buff, summon, spend gauge, summon, spend gauge, summon, spend gauge, and then do regular attacks until it can do it all again. Energy Drain and Fester do present themselves as some ability attacks that you may also need to manage. However, given the general simplicity of the job, I imagine you will have little issue with this, assuming you understand the so-called trans gauge. After that comes our first tank, Gladiator and Paladin, ranked as easy. However, keep in mind that tanks may be considered more difficult due to their somewhat greater responsibilities. Aside from the general issues as a tank of having to manage defensive cooldowns, the Gladiator's specific key difficulties will relate to learning to use fight or flight optimally, which will teach you how to perform the technique commonly called late weaving, which can be helpful to master for many jobs including Lancer. In addition to that, learning when the right time is to use your Sheltron defensive cooldown in between your other defensive cooldowns can also present itself as something difficult to learn. And that leads us to the first healer, Conjurer and White Mage, also ranked as easy, but once again, keep in mind that healers may be considered more difficult due to their somewhat greater responsibilities. As Conjurer is designed as the basic healer, for the first 50 levels, you will have very few surprises in terms of what tools you get. However, a particular pain point for all healer jobs when learning it at first is that in Final Fantasy XIV, it is not just recommended, but expected that healers attack as much as they can, so you don't want to spam cure just because you can. With that being said, this introduces presence of mind as a particular difficulty for conjurers. Use it for damage now, or save it for a panic moment later. After that, region adds a lot more complexity to the way you heal, and similarly, holy introduces a complexity in the way you attack particularly by being an attack that takes the full recast time to finish, introducing some mobility difficulties when choosing to use it. Finally, while Benediction can be considered entirely a tool that makes your job easier, having Benediction means you need to know when to use it. Delay healing to force a situation to use it in, to get some extra damage now, or save it for a panic moment later. I'm guessing you might see the pattern here. Now the difficulty increases some more. Marauder and Warrior is next, ranked as medium, and again, keep in mind that this job is also a tank, so it faces some of the same difficulties regarding defensive cooldowns and aggro management as Gladiator. The key difference for Marauder comes from the fact that Berserk is a far more complex ability to use effectively compared to Fight or Flight, due to only covering 3 attacks every minute instead of upwards to 10. This means that as you unlock better attacks, namely the Beast Gauge, 
You need to stockpile this gauge and plan your combo attacks to get the most value out of Berserk, while simultaneously not delaying Berserk for too long. Later on, you also unlock a damage boosting buff called Surging Tempest that you can keep up by simply doing a specific combo, but managing this adds some extra complexity to your rotation. And finally, Infuriate at level 50 adds even further complexity in managing your beast gauge, although it simultaneously makes it easier to reach the beast gauge you need to maximize your berserk. A little bit of comedy here is that by level 70, far later, this whole Berserk management is completely thrown out the window due to an ability you learn making this completely irrelevant. Personally, I find that this makes level 70 plus warrior easier than level 1 to 50 warrior. Anyway, Pugilist and Monk are also ranked as medium. The biggest reason for this being that the Pugilist has a much faster recast timer than most other jobs, putting more stress on you to choose an action quicker. Meditation early on adds a somewhat complex ability to your toolkit which is affected by random factors, namely critical hit chances. Twin Snakes and Demolish also adds both a damage buff and a damage over time effect and an additional positional to keep watch over, much sooner than the Lancer did. And due to the way combo sequences work for Pugilist, there are multiple emergent combo sequences to take note of rather than just two. This reaches a complexity level where my Pugilist guide does suggest a decent alternative rotation that is easier to perform due to how difficult it can be for some players to do consistently. At level 50, you also get both Dragon Kick, adding more complexity to the base rotation in an extra moving part, and Perfect Balance, which comes in regularly to intentionally mess up your combo sequences with even more complexity. Just keep in mind that due to the speed of the Pugilist and Monk, doing the wrong action tends to be less costly on your damage output compared to other jobs. Next, Archer and Bard are also ranked as medium. From the very start, you are quickly given a randomly activating attack in Straight Shot alongside a damage buff in Raging Strikes. Remember the late weaving from Gladiator? And immediately after that, you're given a damage over time attack and keep in mind that you later have two damage over time attacks both to manage. To simplify things a bit, both of these attacks last equally long and also equally as long as your songs which you have to manage too. A significant difference between the first 50 levels of Bard compared to the rest is that there only being one or two songs means that they can almost be considered cooldowns. However, you should rather lean towards using them too much than too little. The main complexity here comes in which one of them you choose to use Raging Strikes and Battle Voice with, another buff you get at level 50. Archer also gains Barrage, which, again, does not add that much to the complexity already there, as Barrage should be used in Raging Strikes on Straight Shot, and all that magic happens pretty much naturally most of the time. Finally, the Bloodletter ability becomes a bit more difficult to use once you learn your first song, Mage's Ballad, because it makes the cooldown of Bloodletter a bit less predictable. In short, Archer and Bard has a lot of small things to manage, including randomness and stacking a lot of attacks together in a short time frame. And now we raise the stakes even higher with Thaumaturge and Black Mage, ranked as hard. From the very start, the Thaumaturge has no spells without a cast time long enough to almost prevent you from moving. I say almost, because the particular trick that this job is practically forced to learn is the so-called slide cast which is very difficult to do consistently and effectively. Several other jobs can benefit from mastering this skill, however, including all healers. By level 4, the Thaumaturge already has a sort of stance system where you switch between spending MP and generating MP. Relatively simple at a glance, but managing it optimally is the cornerstone of how Thaumaturge and Black Mage functions, and this is only built upon further and further as you go beyond level 50. In addition to this, Thunder is presented as a damage over time component to manage, and it, alongside Fire, both get random effects that, while extremely welcome due to their instant casting functionality and high damage, adds more complexity in managing them. And before you say, but wait, Scathe can be spammed while running, yeah, but the damage of Scathe is low enough that some black mages would rather cast nothing over casting Scathe. Now, remember I promised we would get back to Scholar? This job is also ranked as hard, and remember that it is a healer, so like Conjurer and White Mage, it might be more difficult due to the extra responsibilities of the role. 
Scholar is unlocked by reaching level 30 with Arcanist, hence you start at level 30 with Scholar, which adds even more difficulty if you have not practiced healing on Conjurer first. Nonetheless, the main difficulties of the Scholar is getting used to the fact that you have a pet that helps you with healing. While healers in general should get used to staying cool-headed and take their time healing up the party, no need to spam out big heals every time. The Scholar needs to get used to having people in the party not fully topped up. If everyone is fully topped up on HP, then your pet will just stand there, watching. This also makes Scholar an excellent healer to use to practice attacking more aggressively and taking more risks with healing less. Another difficulty point is in relation to managing Scholar shields. You may feel inclined to place a new Adlocurium shield on the tank whenever there isn't one. But if you do that, you will very quickly run out of MP. Only place shields that are needed or preemptively before combat. And finally, while Aetherflow grants you more MP to work with and Lustrate almost trivializes healing entirely for the levels ahead. Managing this tool also adds some difficulty to the job that Conjurer avoids entirely by um, not having it. And finally, the Rogue and Ninja. The Rogue itself is a job that I ranked as very easy, just like Lancer. However, the instant you reach level 30 and become a ninja, that ranking instantly changes to very hard. You may notice if you're actively choosing your first class that Rogue is not actually an option in the character creation. You need to reach level 10 with any class to unlock Rogue, and Rogue is located in the same starting zone as Marauder and Arcanist. So, if you choose this as your starting class, you should simply choose either Marauder or Arcanist, level up to 10 following the story, and then switch over whenever is convenient. Anyway, for the Rogue, the only complexity is in using Merc to maximize your damage output, as well as the positional requirement to maximize Aeolian Edge's damage. That is genuinely it, as in boss fights, you can't even use Trick Attack. But once you upgrade to Ninja, you are introduced to the ninjutsu actions requiring that you memorize different cast sequences of hand signs or mudras to access your ninjutsu spells. And since one of these spells allow you to use trick attack while in combat, this then circles back around and reintroduces the attack as a complexity. Finally, Kasats adds an additional bonus ninjutsu every minute you also need to manage by making sure to cast the strongest ninjutsu you can. Similar to Archer and Bard, and to some degree Lance and Dragoon, the ninja gets more difficulty out of having to plan a lot of cooldowns in a short planned time frame every so often. But this pales in comparison to the difficulty of learning to memorize the ninjutsus, which tend to be the absolutely hardest part about learning ninja. Now, that was all the starting classes and then some. You may have seen that there are more jobs in Final Fantasy XIV, However, some of them start at level 50, some even higher than that, and then a few require that you spend a significant amount of time at level 50 to even reach in the first place. So none of these jobs would be feasibly viable as your first job to level 50. Here is the ranking on a single summarized screen for your convenience. To reiterate, if you want something simple and easy to start with, I recommend Lancer or Arcanist. If you want to tank or heal, then Gladiator or Conjurer are your easiest choices. However, I will say that if you were to prefer to play just one job all the way to max, and also want to tank, then Warrior eventually becomes easier than Paladin. And if your real intent behind playing healer is that you want to be a sage, then playing Scholar may be more beneficial for your mastery than Conjurer. If you have a specific preference in the kind of job you want, then all of them are equally viable at max level, so choose what speaks to you, as you will not have to choose the strongest. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you found this guide helpful or at least interesting, and if you did, consider leaving a like. You can also subscribe or tap the bell to get notified when next I post a video. Make sure to let me know what you end up choosing in the comments, or perhaps what you originally chose when you made your character. I made an Arcanist myself. Fun fact, before Stormblood, the game had a cross-class feature that allowed some jobs to dip into some classes toolkits. The idea was genius, but the result was that, for example, all the physical damage dealers needed access to Raging Strikes, Archer, and Blood for Blood, the original name of Lancer's Lance Charge, and all tanks needed Provoke, which only one of them learned naturally. Paladins don't learn a proper healing spell until late in Heavensward because back in the day they could access Cure from Conjurer. This was also further complicated by the requirement to unlocking a job was 
both level 30 in the primary class, but also level 15 in some other semi-relevant class. For instance, level 15 Conjurer to unlock Paladin, 